This is a recorded approximation of the presentations given on July 29th and August 1st at the 2024 AIAA Aviation Forum for the paper Duct Tape, a Steady State Axisymmetric Ducted Fan Analysis Code Designed for Gradient-Based Optimization, written by myself, Judd Mayer, a doctoral candidate working in the Brigham Young University Flight Optimization and Wind Laboratory under the advisement of Professor Andrew Ning. This paper was one of the finalists for the MDO student paper competition. Advanced air mobility is taking off, pun intended, and has opened up new design spaces as novel concepts are explored. One type of advanced air mobility concept involves distributed ducted fans, which are potentially more efficient and quieter than open rotor designs. To the end of better exploring electric ducted fan design spaces, we have written duct tape, a ducted axisymmetric propulsor evaluation code written in the Julia language that is designed for use in gradient-based multidisciplinary optimization. The underlying methodologies of duct tape are based on those used for the ducted fan design code, DFTC, which is an excellent code written in Fortran. The purpose of developing a new tool similar to DFTC, but not simply using DFTC, lies in our goal to explore electric ducted fan design spaces using gradient-based multidisciplinary optimization. Since DFTC and duct tape include multiple nonlinear system solves, some containing additional linear system solves and various lookup tables, it becomes necessary to use modern code languages and leverage associated automatic differentiation packages to build a tool suitable for gradient-based optimization. In addition, despite being well-designed, DFTC is no longer under development and is considered by many to be incomplete. On the other hand, duct tape is at the beginning stages as a development platform for further ducted fan analysis capabilities in the MDO context. As a general overview, duct tape includes body, rotor, and wake models, which we'll go over briefly in the next few slides. The bodies, including the shroud and center body in duct tape, are modeled with an axisymmetric linear vortex panel method. This axisymmetric panel method is built on the concept of distributing axisymmetric vortex rings per unit length to create vortex bands, like this one. By the axisymmetric assumption, we can think of these bands as flat, linearly distributed vortex panels like this though using vortex ring influences rather than planar vortex influences. The panel method is implemented in a typical manner, where we solve for the strength of the vortex strength distributions along each panel, those are the green gammas here, given a boundary condition of no flow normal to the body surface enforced at control points distributed along the surface, such as the point in red shown here. In duct tape, we take into account both the free stream as well as rotor and wake-induced velocities when assembling the boundary conditions, thereby coupling the rotor and wake to the bodies. The rotors in duct tape are modeled as blade element based lifting lines, where we find the inflow velocity and angle based on the rotor rotation and velocities induced by the bodies and wake, thereby coupling the bodies and wake to the rotor. With the inflow velocity and angle, we look up the lift from a predetermined airfoil or cascade polar for each blade element. From the lift, we use the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem to obtain the local circulation, which is passed into the wake model. We also distribute source panels along the lifting line in order to approximate viscous drag effects of the rotor, and we obtain the source strength distributions from the airfoil polar lookup tables as well. For the wake, one might model a set of vortex filaments shed from the blade elements. In duct tape, we smear such vortex filaments into axisymmetric vortex sheets that satisfy a force-free weight condition. Then we discretize those sheets into vortex bands like those used to define the bodies. The wake panel strengths are informed by the rotor circulation as well as the rotor and body-induced velocities on the wake, thereby coupling the rotor and bodies to the wake. The wake panels are placed on approximate streamlines here in blue, which lie on an elliptic grid calculated from the solution to a Poisson equation, which is based on the axisymmetric stream function and using the body geometries as part of the boundaries. In general, the body rotor and wake are coupled through their mutually induced velocities, with the wake also being informed by the rotor circulation. Some of the model coupling and the airfoil lookup tables result in a nonlinear system that needs to be solved iteratively to obtain the ducted fan aerodynamics. Duct tape has two implementations available for the overall nonlinear aerodynamic solve. The first is very similar to DFTC's approach, and the other is a reformulation we have put together to allow for more flexibility to the user and for future development. The DFTC-like solve uses a fixed point method with controlled successive over relaxation, or CSOR for short. 
The residual is formulated in a vaguely Gauss-Seidel manner in that the states are updated inside the residual evaluation. Those are the green boxes. In addition, the various relaxation factor calculations have been tuned specifically for the kinds of ducted fan analyses DFTC was designed for. Together, the highly specialized solver uh, makes the DFTC approach very efficient, but inevitably inflexible. On the other hand, our reformulation of the residual is done in such a way that the states are updated, again here in green, outside of the residual evaluation, so that basically any external solver could be used. This should make duct tape more amenable to future development and potentially the direct coupling of other disciplines. In addition, we are nearly fin finished implementing an adjoint rather than direct method for differentiation of the solve using the implicit AD Julia package, the implementation of which is more manageable for our generalized solve approach. I should note before moving on that as part of making duct tape usable for gradient-based optimization, we developed a state initialization method used for both solve approaches, which is written in CC Blade, or I should say which is based on CC Blade, a blade element momentum solver formulated for guaranteed convergence. In order to verify both solve approaches implemented in duct tape, we compared to an example case from the DFTC source code with the geometry shown here. We compared outputs such as thrust, torque, and efficiency over a range of advanced ratios. In these plots, we see excellent matching between DFTC and duct tape across the entire range of advanced ratios. In fact, both solvers match DFTC within one half percent at the worst case. The plots for both the DFTC-like solver and our alternate solver are visually identical, so we've only included one set of plots here. We also performed some preliminary benchmarking comparing the DFTC-like solver with various external solvers implemented in other Julia packages. We found that despite the inherent efficiency of the DFTC-like solver, for the tight tolerances required for gradient-based optimization, some external solvers, for example, an Anderson acceleration method, outperformed it for this example case, lending further credence to our developing an alternate solution method. We also looked at two Jacobian-based methods for the overall nonlinear solve. Despite having fewer iterations, the Jacobian-based methods, both the quasi-Newton method in red and the new methods in green, tended to be much slower than the fixed-point methods, simply due to the cost of calculating the Jacobian. Therefore, we have duct tape default to fixed-point methods, while the others are available as user options. As is our goal, duct tape is designed for use in gradient-based optimization. In other words, optimization methods that progress in an intelligent manner based on the local gradients of the design space, as seen in this animation. To demonstrate duct tape's capabilities in a gradient-based optimization context, we have performed a few example optimizations with duct tape demonstrating this. The example optimization we chose to perform is an average efficiency maximization with respect to cord and twist distributions along the rotor, as well as duct shape parameters, and subject to a minimum thrust constraint. Before moving on, let me orient you for what we're going to be looking at for the next few slides. In the top left, we'll see active and inactive design variables, which will stack for each subsequent example. On the bottom left, we'll see a side view of the geometry as it changes during the optimization. The dotted lines indicate the initial geometries, as well as the constant center body geometry in later optimizations. On the top right, we'll see a change in the efficiency curve throughout the optimization. Note that the, th the three vertical lines indicate the advanced ratio at which the efficiency is averaged to obtain the objective value. The objective value is plotted and printed out on the bottom right and will also update throughout the optimization. We first ran an isolated rotor optimization for reference, uh, which excluded the duct and center body. We see here the typical result with the cord length decreasing toward the hub and tip and the twist monotonically decreasing from hub to tip. Next, we added a duct and center body to the rotor, still allowing the rotor geometry to change, but fixing the duct geometry to, the, to be the initial geometry used in the other optimizations. We see that the rotor geometry is a bit thinner than the isolated rotor, as the duct is helping to induce a bit of thrust to meet the minimum thrust constraint. Taking the opposite case, where we set the rotor geometry to be fixed at the initial values for the other optimizations, and allow the duct geometry to change, we see that the duct changes significantly in order to find the optimum. The optimum here is a relatively large jump from the previous optimization, which indicates that the fixed duct geometry shown here in blue may not be a very good design for this objective and operating conditions. Finally, we include both the rotor and duct geometry as design variables. 
we see that working together, the duct and rotor can achieve an even more optimal design, though in this case especially, there will be some structural concerns with how small the cord values are. In future work, we plan to add structural models and constraints to address that issue. In addition, the duct geometry is very thick, likely due to the current lack of a proper viscous drag model for the duct and center body. Also in future work, we plan on adding a viscous drag model for those surfaces, likely an integral boundary layer method. Furthermore, we plan to also include acoustic models and constraints and perform various aero structural acoustic MDO studies. In summary, duct tape is verified within a half a percent of DFTC. It is functional in a gradient-based optimization setting. And with some further development, we expect duct tape to be useful as we apply it to MDO-based design exploration studies for applications in advanced air mobility.